Okay, so I'd like to reconvene the, um, the public session of the school board meeting. Um, welcome back from break, everybody. Hope everyone had a good break. And uh, Dr. Montesano, if you were. Amazing. Oh, excuse me, wait. We have to approve the minutes. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Hopefully everyone had a chance to review the minutes from uh, the last meeting that have been circulated. Uh, did anybody have any questions or comments or corrections to that? Um, we would need a motion to approve the minutes and a second. Move. Second. Okay, any discussion or commentary? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, minutes are approved. Thank you, uh, good evening. Um, welcome back to everybody, hope everybody had a good break. Nice to get away for a few days anyway. Um, so things have been relatively quiet since we got back. It's only been two days. Um, but we've been working on a number of things related to the capital projects. So you'll hear more about uh, from Dan later on uh, tonight. Um, <clears throat> we had some students perform at Carnegie Hall uh, last Saturday. I did have an opportunity to uh, speak with Pam Simpson today. We dropped off a nice program from Carnegie Hall with our students. And she said it was just a tremendous, tremendous experience for our kids. Uh, so congratulations to her and her kids, and I'm happy they had that experience. It's wonderful. Um, tonight, uh, as part of the report, you're going to hear from uh, Dr. Ketke, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, the um, Tri-States pre-consultancy that we had recently in preparation for the uh, site visit that we're scheduled to have in October. Um, we had a, a pretty full day and a half, almost two days, uh, with our visiting team. Um, as you'll hear from Mara, they did come away fairly impressed with the type of work that we're doing here. Um, and I don't want to steal her thunder, so I'm going to ask her to come on up and uh, talk to the board a little bit about the uh, site visit that we had. Good evening. On February 6th and 7th, the district engaged in a planning consultancy with the Tri-States Consortium, a dynamic learning organization of public schools that values systems, systems thinking as the foundation for continuous improvement. The purpose of the visit was to assist the district in planning for the full visit to take place in October. Members of the 13-member visiting team included Dr. Martin Brooks, Executive Director of the Tri-States Consortium, Dr. Mike McGill, Retired Superintendent of Scarsdale Public Schools, and Dr. Lauren Allen, Retired Superintendent of the Ardsley Union Free School District. The focus of the planning consultancy centered around the assessment of the Bronxville Promise and included a general guiding question of how do we know our students are growing in the dispositions of the promise. The last Tri-States visit in April of 2016 focused on the development of the shared vision of the Bronxville Promise, which was in its infancy, and highlighted some of the instructional strategies identified as promising in terms of developing our students to lead, to think critically, to engage the world, and to innovate. Since 2016, we have expanded our students' access to authentic learning experiences that align with the dispositions. These experiences include project-based learning through a partnership with the Buck Institute, developing a love of reading and writing through authentic literacy work with Teachers College Reading and Writing Project, and creating structures that support students' ability to think critically about their own learning through innovative designs and education. We have also explored factors related to student stress through partnership, partnerships with Challenge Success and Mastery Transcript Consortium. The visiting team was very impressed and commented that the district is doing important leading edge work and posed interesting questions for itself and for the field. Those questions and the search for answers have significant implications for public education in America. To say that the visit team was impressed would be to significantly underestimate our reaction. 
During the two-day visit, teachers and students presented on performance tasks that focused on innovation, engaged citizenship, leadership, and critical thinking. Examples including, included designing optimal chairs for classrooms, coding math apps, creating social commentary through media and literature, classroom routines where students reflect on errors in mathematics in order to solidify their understanding, and analysis of satire in literature <coughs> using the approval matrix from New York Magazine with its infamous highbrow, lowbrow, despicable and brilliant quadrant ratings. They also heard more about our plans to expand the senior portfolios from WISE to grades five and eight. In terms of feedback for moving forward and preparing for October's visit, the visiting team advises us to continue to question if the district is assessing for what it values, the dispositions of the Bronxville Promise and to engage the faculty in discussions to identify evidence related to the Bronxville Promise and how to best capture the evidence to demonstrate student growth. One thought was to transition the performance tasks alive and well across the district into performance assessments through the creation of aligned rubrics based on the indicators and outcomes identified by the faculty. Additionally, the visiting team questioned whether the district is more interested in learning about individual student growth or systemic growth, and to reflect on the portfolio development process through that lens. Further, the visiting team cautioned that as the roots of the promise deepen, the work will inevitably bump up against existing norms and, structure, and structures, such as transcripts and schedules. The team encouraged us to continue to pursue relationships with Mastery Transcript Consortium and others interested in transformative practice and to continue our proactive discussions with the board in identifying and anticipating pushback. They expressed an ongoing need to narrate the connectedness between some of the professional development, including the Teachers College Reading and Writing Project, Innovative Designs in Education, and the project-based learning work to help faculty see how the dots connect and to anticipate tension between teacher autonomy and consistency of practice, which occurs in every district. Dr. Brooks shared, there has been a noticeable shift in faculty understanding and support for the Bronxville Promise since the last visit. The vision's roots have deepened and it is clear that many staff members have incorporated elements of the vision into their work. The teachers with whom we met were able to talk not just about how they have implemented the promise in their work, but also about the why. Described as a little place doing big things, we were encouraged by the team to continue to move the work forward. The written feedback from the planning visit is currently in draft form and once finalized, will be shared with the board in its entirety. A special thank you goes to all faculty who participated in planning the visit, including Denise Flood, Robert Cross, Jean Orsenigo, Dana Landisman, Bill Meyer, Veronica Fiore, Justin Chow, Kathy Marin, Carol Ann Del Judas, Claire Holoku, Brad Ashley, Ben Cornish, Courtney Allen, Rachel Sugarman, Brittany Bria, Lori Feingold, Nina Blauner, Megan Figueroa, and Jean Wendells. Additionally, many thanks goes to the administrative leadership team for their help in planning and coordinating the visit and supporting the Bronxville Promise in the next phase of development. If I can just add, I want to... Um, <clears throat> express my appreciation to Mara. She really worked very hard in putting all the, um, the, the pre-visitation together, uh, arranging all the um, presentations, the schedules, uh, and really was the driving force behind our advancement of the promise and all the things that we're doing to try to stay on that cutting edge um, of where we are and, and where we're going. And she really did an outstanding job, so I do appreciate the work that you've done 
and I look forward to the work you continue to do as we get ready for the, the real visit in October. <laughs> but they left us with some very important questions and a lot of things to think about as we uh, continue our work um, in, in deepening the dispositions and, and really what it means for our kids and, um, and how we're going to measure our student growth in the, in the four dispositions as well. But um, you know, after being here and listening to that, and you know, it was a proud moment, I think, for all of us to be part of that uh, in this particular visit, and then going out recently to a superintendent, national superintendent's conference, I can, uh, I can tell you um, that the work that we're doing here is trying to be emulated in many other places but I think we're doing it the best that I've seen so far. So congratulations, Mara. Thank you. Okay. Um, just a, a, quick, a quick question, Mara. Mara, question? Questions. Um, Not off yet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fantastic to hear that the, the roots are sort of deepening on the promise because it's five years in maybe now. Um, it's more than three. I've been here five, for four. About five. five years. Five. Um, five since the initial conversations, yes. So that, that, that's good to hear. Uh, in terms of uh, students, is, do we have a way of measuring the impact to students or student outcomes or like what a senior today versus a senior three years ago or five years ago, like what the, the impact on their life and their education change has been? You know, it's difficult to assess for these things, which is why we asked the Tri-States Committee to help us think about how do you know if kids are growing in, in these areas. Um, they are not often easily captured in quantitative measures. We feel that the portfolio, which students will do in now fifth, eighth, and senior year, could provide some sort of connecting the dots for individual students to think about how they presented in these areas as fifth graders, and how that changed and adapted by eighth grade, and how that changed and adapted by the time they're ready to leave us. Um, we have other methods, such as we're going to be inter uh, surveying seniors um, as seniors, and then I think five, 18 months out. Five years five out. Five years yeah. out. Um, which is being coordinated through our high school and our guidance department so we can get some longitudinal data such as that. Um, so it will definitely be a combination of quantitative measures, surveys, uh, and individual growth stories that tell the story over time. And at least from my perspective at this point, it's important to look at all of those as evidence. Um, but I. I think what makes me most uh, proud is that we have mobilized these words into things that kids do and, and curriculum, and now we have sort of the starting point for collecting the information over time for them to explore how they've grown in these areas. And to me, uh, one of the things that stuck out was the individual stories um, are, are the best way to tell how our students are experiencing the growth in these areas. And we did have students present, by the way, and that was oh, you did. yeah, that was really um, terrific. It was it was really you'd be really very proud of our students who were there, how well they talked about the promise and what it's meant to them and how they felt they've grown in the promise. And the other thing that <clears throat> that st uh, stuck with me um, at the end of the visit was uh, something that Marty Brooks said, and that is, you know the we should be thinking about the difference between and how we're going to collect data versus collecting evidence, which is a really interesting question to me and what the differences might be and how we're going about doing that. So uh, we're going to struggle with that one a little bit. In October, they will see some of the students present portfolios. Mm -hmm. um, we are going to record <coughs> many of the seniors and they can see fifth and eighth graders as sixth and ninth graders. Um, so we expect them to give us some pointed feedback once they see those t that type of work. And then they had other suggestions about maybe sort of standardizing rubrics based on the indicators and outcomes we have, which we haven't you know, decided upon yet, but that was one way they could, they suggested you could quantify it if, if necessary. Thank you. Anyone else? Thanks. 
Um, so the I only thing on my uh, uh, on my area is the uh, calendar, the second review of the calendar, uh, for you to consider. No changes. No changes. Um, so there's a resolution asking you to to uh, approve the calendar for next school year. So we get a motion for the uh, approval of the next year calendar. So moved. Are you guys saying? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Aye. Dr. Kelly. Good evening, everybody. Um, relatively short personnel agenda this evening. I do want to start off um, by congratulating uh, Pam Kohlhoff on her decision to uh, resign for the purpose of retirement. Over her uh, 23 years here, she has really touched so many students' lives and we're deeply grateful um, for her expertise and what a tremendous colleague and friend she's been. So I have before you um, a resolution to approve her resignation. Great, now you want to do this one individually? Okay, um, can we get a motion to approve the resignation and retirement of Pam Cola? Move. Second. Second. Any discussion? I would just like to let the record show that I think we all agree with what you said, and some of us have been fortunate to have kids go through her classroom, and it's been a real treat. So big shoes to fill. She's great. Yeah. Would be missed. Yeah. So, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Um, the remainder of the resolutions um, involve the continuous regular substitute appointment um, in middle school science as well as an appointment of a substitute teacher and a substitute teacher aide. Um, in addition, there is a side letter agreement between the district and the Bronxville Teachers Association as was reviewed in executive session. Um, and then some revisions to um, our high school play, um, our winter coaches roster, as well as a new ANA and Chartwell's employee. So those would be resolutions B through J. Great. Um, can I get a motion to approve resolutions B through J? So moved. Second, anybody? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Dan. Uh, I'll begin by uh, talking about the current year's budget while Connie's um, going to get a few slides related to next year's budget ready. Um, as expected, my projected surplus is eking up a little bit as we get towards the end of the year. Um, split roughly evenly between uh, expenditures and revenues. Now projecting about $360,000, hopefully with a goal of getting close enough that to um, uh, our $500,000 uh, uh, allocation uh, of appropriated fund balance to offset the 2019-20 tax levy uh, without reducing reserves. So if we can get there, we'll be very happy, but uh, I think we'll get close, if not all the way there. And if anyone can read that on the screen, I'm <laughs> good luck. Yeah, sniper. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> and then, um, last time we all met together was on a Saturday morning uh, before the break. We talked about the um, the budget for next year. We're in the throes of our budget process. If you can go to the next slide, Connie, you know, we're, we're actually towards the end. Uh, we're getting to the point where uh, uh, the board's getting close to adopting it at the next board meeting, hopefully. Uh, so um, here's, uh, here's uh, what shook out after the last uh, Saturday morning meeting. If you can go to the next slide, please, Connie. Just keep hitting until the whole thing shows. Yeah. Okay. Uh, our, uh, uh, to reiterate, our budget is about $334,000 under the cap uh, at this point, uh, with an estimated tax levy increase of about 2.64%. And um, although some changes were made to the budget, nothing was made, no changes were made to the bottom line uh, for uh, uh, 
decreases. If you can go to the next page, Connie, we saw some uh, reductions in salaries and benefits of about three hundred seventy-eight thousand uh, dollars. But uh, what this current budget number two is showing uh, is an increase in building improvements of three hundred seventy-eight thousand dollars. As we uh, we are uh, going to suggest addressing PA system upgrades. Um, and that that was one of the things in uh, you know our self critique on security that was woefully lacking was um, clock and PA systems and we're looking at a few right now and these were preliminary estimates in that range. I think we also talked about coordinating with <clears throat> land and the construction activity to make sure that we don't rip yep. out walls twice. Right. Exactly. They've already been plugged into that. Okay. Yep. So uh, every all 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 budget pieces are certainties at this point, with the one minor one being state aid, and final state aid numbers usually don't impact us that much. So um, you know, this is uh, I, I'd be willing to say that this is everything in this budget. You know, there's there is is certain at this point. Um, you know, the board obviously can can uh, you know elected to, to do with it what they want, but this is the budget we're recommending at this point. Um, if you want go to the next slide, Connie. Did you see that? And this is what it looks like. The main drivers, you know, we went through 1.66%, um, uh, which is well over half of the budget increase, is, is a few new programs. And uh, the facilities that I was, uh, the, f the facilities augmentation that I was just uh, referring to with the PA system. Uh, other than that, uh, due to the retirement incentive, personnel is relatively flat. Um, obviously, contractual is, is up significantly because of the PA system. BOCES is uh, up because of uh, the security. Uh, consultant that we're hoping to get on board uh, and then benefits are up pr primarily due to the uh, retirement incentive it's a one-time hit for the payouts hey Dan, one, one question on the revenue side and um, Westchester County is talking about a 1% sales increase and some of that comes to the school district, but I couldn't <coughs> figure out how much would actually impact us. Like that we we get about 380,000 yeah. bucks annually. But I don't know what the current county tax and how that, uh, it, any idea? Boy, a 1% increase in the sales tax would be, that's gotta be like a 15 or 20% increase in the overall sales tax. The ca I'm not sure what the county share is in Westchester, but just say it's half because yeah. the state has a share also. Right. I think it's so if they're increasing their sales tax for yeah. let's say three to four percent. Yeah, so if they're increasing it by one percent, I mean it's a, and then a thirty get, percent increase in their share. As a school district, right? Yeah, I don't know how much would trickle down to us from from that kind of increase. You probably should look at that because my guess is that passes mm -hmm. at the state level because we're talking about the state level. Not that it's probably going to impact this budget, but just yeah. as you think about going forward. Sure. So this is just, at this point, just informational. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. We would expect to vote. We would expect to have the board approve it at the next board meeting. Yes. And then go through the public notification process prior to the... Yep. Then uh, the next thing after that would be a public uh, a public hearing in um, in May, early May, with a with a vote in was it third Tuesday in May? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And next, I do have some financial action items. There are two uh, in this budget. Um, is uh, maintain it maintains our current level of funding for our uh, um, for our uh, 
our leased um, technology from um, Putnam Westchester Boses. Um, that's uh, financial action item number one. Uh, our installment purchase agreement, uh, about $75,000 a year uh, is the current level we uh, have settled on to uh, sustain a four-year hardware replacement cycle and continue, while continuously upgrading uh, maintenance of the infrastructure. Uh, this does not include labor, project management fees, and imaging costs, which are already in our BOCES budget in the technology area. Um, and I, I picked out a few highlights in my memo. Uh, laptops and desktops, we're looking at about 61. Um, we have, uh, we're replacing outdated projectors and smart boards with newer technology, you know, interactive projectors and interactive televisions. Uh, there's a few printers and uh, there's some infrastructure updates as far as switches go. And uh, there's classroom technology as well, Chromebooks and I mini iPads. I don't know, Jen, if you have any comments, but uh, we like to get this approved at this meeting. It's subject to uh, the funding of the budget. So if the budget goes down, we do not have to do this. So just so I understand this, Dan, so that this equipment we buy and it's, it's in place for the school year starting in September? Yes. All of it. So in this budget, they, in here they have a pr procurement fee of 4%. I understand that. That's for them to go out yep. and buy it. But then underneath that, I read this, the uh, fine print, and it says they're going to charge us 3% a year after that for procurement. Why would they charge us again after they buy the equipment? Well, it's not. Yeah. When you have new purchases in the second year? Yes, yeah, so it's an annual. I so it's there. So we're, we, we are or we are not going to purchase $300,000 worth of equipment? This, yes. We, we are. Yes. Is there so, anticipated expense the following year? Just the lease payments. Yeah, it's the same. It's what we did last summer, so it's the same for this summer. Yeah, it's, a new, it's on a replacement cycle to replace teacher machines, classroom machines. And, and the primary reason we go through BOCES, there's two reasons. A, if it floods, they're, they're the ones who have to deal with it because uh, it's their equipment until the lease is paid up. And B, is that we get aid on it. So, Michael, is your question, are, we're gonna, you're acknowledging we're paying the 4% this right. year. That makes but, sense to me. Right. And your question is, are we going to pay 3% on, on the 299 every year? Every year. That's the question. The way I read this the is the way that it's written. Would. It's unclear. I'll get clarified. It's on page three of. I just don't. I four percent. I'm fine with. Yeah, that makes <laughs> no sense. But the three percent on a recurring basis already doesn't procured. make sense to me. Unless they're saying that next year, whatever we buy new will be at three percent, which is lovely. Maybe. But why would you have that in this contract? Are we buying or leasing? That's what I thought we were. That's why so it makes no years. sense. Right. Yeah. So is that for in year two, we are leasing new things, and that comes with? It's not clear. It, it's that's, not the, clear. Okay. that's his question. I, it's I think clear. it's a reasonable question. It is a reasonable question. Great. So the two, second, uh, second financial action item is a foundation donation. Uh, the foundation is kicking in another $8,750 uh, $8, for technical support related to the uh, very large uh, donation of a television studio. 
for I guess it's uh, it's continuing um, training and uh, on how to use uh, the technology. So you know, thanks. <laughs> I, we say it every meeting, but thank you very much to the foundation. That's an awesome facility, by the way. Mm -hmm. On just on the first one, you said it. We'd like to approve it tonight, except that it's subject to the budget being approved. Yes, which is obviously more than two months away. Yes. So what what is the benefit of approving? We have a question about it. What's the benefit of approving it tonight versus at the in in you know three or four weeks? The benefit is to approve it to get it to full season. It goes in their budget to get approved, then go up to the and then it goes state. to the state. But it's a process. So the earlier we approve it, the quicker it gets. Gets it in the pipeline. There isn't a delay in the orders. If you delay the orders, it delays the delivery, which delays the installation for holding a storm. Yeah, I would ask the board to approve it, and we'll definitely we'll we'll get you the answer to that question. Because okay. it's tentative approval anyway, right? Yeah. So I move we approve it, it's noting that it's tentative and certainly. Well, it's it's approval. We need to it's approval as far as we're concerned, and then mm -hmm. if, if the public votes yes on our budget, then That's it's through. It's but approved. if they come back and they say, "Well, we found out, and it is indeed three percent a year, whether you like it or not," uh, we would have the ability to say, "I move that we don't that we withdraw the approval." Wouldn't we be able to do that? getting signed tonight but then I think you cross out that language <laughs> Jen do you know do you think if the board waited to approve it in March does that give us enough time still to get it to BOCES for, the, for their budget cut off so yeah. if you want to uh, hold off until the March board meeting it's up to you It's not unusual to do a subject two, like you know, get yeah. if if you get the three percent out, go ahead and go. So is, I'd be comfortable. Or with that. a satisfactory explanation as yeah. to what it is. Yeah, yeah. What that's fine. There yeah. for. Yeah, it's okay. I can do that. So it doesn't have. Okay, to so we, we I guess we just need to modify this motion a little bit, to say, subject to clarification of the fees involved. The procurement fees. The procurement fees. The in, procurement fees. In out years. We would like to approve a motion to. I can't read that, so. <laughs> um, the installment purchase agreement. So can we get a motion for that? <laughs> Whatever you say. Second, everybody? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that's getting signed tonight as is. No. Subject to. No. It can be signed. It can be signed once so, we have clarification. So it's not getting signed. It doesn't have to be signed yeah. tonight, but it no, can be we, signed we can sign it two next. days from now yeah, right. or whatever. It right. doesn't have to wait till March 21st or whenever the next one. All right, the second resolution is a little bit easier. Um, can we get a motion to approve the acceptance of the grant? Move that we accept the money. Can <laughs> <laughs> we get a second? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you very much, School Foundation. Moving on to facilities, we have a lot going on. Um, we checked on uh, early this week after break. We checked on the status of our pumps. Uh, the, the pieces are being uh, collected out in Bakersfield, California. And we're still on schedule for an April delivery with uh, an April slash May installation. Um, stormwater. Uh, our plan for uh, alleviating stormwater pressure on, uh, on the Meadow Avenue side of the building is being finalized. Uh, for inclusion into the uh, you know the construction this summer hopefully uh, connecting Meadow Avenue drainage to the pump system uh, it's going to be designed by land and approved by both uh, Falchetti and uh, our other consultant Petroselli engineering uh, Chambers field uh, steady progress is being made replacing uh, the drainage and finalizing both uh, the field and the track designs. The turf has been ordered and should arrive in a month or so. Uh, demolition and disposal of the field should happen during that time over the next three or four weeks. Uh, we're trying to put as much pressure as we can to speed, th speed up the process, but uh, I think we're probably looking at Memorial Day completion at the earliest. Well, the budget document said June. We are hoping earlier, but uh, um, you know, just 
can't seem to get them to move faster. Um, and then the library and uh, large bond project. Um, both bids are being advertised tomorrow with walkthroughs scheduled for uh, early March and a bid opening scheduled in late March. And we're certainly looking forward to that. I think where those bids and the contractors we get uh, will tell us a lot about how much financial pressure will be placed on the project and if anything has to be value engineered. Or if alternatives can fit in. Or, or if the bids come in lower. I mean, we've already had favorable bids <coughs> on the uh, ceiling work that was done um, and, the, uh, and the field. So, you know, pumps came in right, up, right around where they were budgeted. So... Maybe we'll have a favorable response as far as the uh, as the overall uh, bid goes. I'm sorry, Dan. When did you say we would have that conversation? April. We'd have that conversation in April. Uh, I don't know if we'll be ready to award bids at the April board meeting, um, but if we can, we will. Okay. Um, and if if we year. can't, yes. If we, not, we'll probably have to have a special, a special board meeting, meeting to yeah. approve them because I don't. We'd rather not wait. Our plan is to award them, but if, if we get contractors we don't know and have to vet them, it, it may take longer. Fair enough. But, but the know. idea is to have actually construction take place this summer. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Is there an official date where the bids are due? Yes. Uh, it's the end of March. I don't know the exact maybe? date offhand. The 23rd? 20, yeah, something. It's the 23rd. It's the last week in March. 7th, 23rd. Okay, I do have a uh, couple of action items, or one action item, change orders related to the playroom ceiling project. Before the break, I alerted the board to uh, a couple of conditions that were discovered that required, uh, that were going to require change orders. Uh, they've been um, both vetted and approved by both LAN, our architect, and Savin, our construction manager. So I'd ask the board to approve uh, $14,034.37 worth of change orders, which will conclude this project. And uh, it, it comes out about $20,000 under the original budget, even with these change orders. Good job. Can we get a motion to approve the change order resolution? Move. Any second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Dan. Thank you. So, John. Yes. Um, I just wanted to note publicly for the record that there was discussion, um, which was the result of it having been raised by um, a couple of the coaches for a couple of the varsity coaches, the prospect of uh, exploring alternate use, uh, alternate uh, facilities uh, off site like uh, Tibbetts Field, as well as potentially exploring the use of temporary lighting for Hayes Field to enable uh, certain teams to be able to practice after dark, at least in the early spring, uh, because Hayes Field is really going to be overtaxed um, by the athletic programs. And, and Roy had actually said that he was going to discuss that with the athletic director. Thank you. Um, next up, I think, is policy review, right? Yes. As you know, we've been re uh, reviewing the policies. And uh, the ones that are up for first reading are all required policies that have been updated. Um, I don't think there's anything significantly changed in any of these uh, policies. Um, but it's just keeping us up to date with uh, current regulations and, and laws. Uh, so we have uh, some policies up for a first reading. And then we have two uh, policies that will be rescinded that aren't necessarily long. One, the other one happens to be in the uh, other policy, so we don't need them any longer. Okay, so we have two. We have two resolutions. The first is to approve the first reading, which we'll then do again in a month. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, um, can I get a motion to approve the first reading of the four policies that are listed here? So moved. Any seconds? Second. Any discussion? Commentary? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Are, the, are these dramatic readings? <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like them to be. They're taking place in the TV Feel studio free. with the, um, the new cameras. We can do a pretty mean code of ethics for you if you'd like. I, yeah, you know, I, I think it would be riveting. <laughs> the second resolution is to rescind, and this is a one time only. We're not going to do a double. Okay, great. Um, can I get a motion to approve the resolution to rescind policies 5155 and 5160? Move. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Um, committee reports. I don't think we've had, mm -hmm. besides we had the, we had the um, budget review meeting uh, with the board and, and the staff a couple weeks ago. That was very productive. Thanks for the time there. And otherwise, I don't think there are any committee reports. Um, Action calendar is a meeting in a month. Right. We, Reminder, we just we did uh, we do not have a meeting this Saturday. That was yeah, we can't we cancel the Saturday it. meeting. Oh. Um, okay. Public hearing. Dr. Katz. <laughs> <laughs> Your fan club. Good evening. My name is Dr. David Katz. I'm a uh, middle school social studies teacher teaching 7th and 8th grade here in Bronxville Middle School and also for now the uh, president of the Bronxville Teachers Association. I uh, rise to extend my congratulations as well to Pam Kohlhoff on behalf of her union for her 23 years as a professional educator here in Bronxville. Um, she's made an Im Im immense difference in the lives of her colleagues as well as the lives of students. Um, I say for now because this is, um, I would say bittersweet, but not really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the, Just right? bitter. The, the, uh, <laughs> the last time I rised uh, in front of this board in my role as president of the Bronxville Teachers Association, a uh, role that I've served for 11 years now and working. have taken great pride in the work that the Teachers Association has done over the last 11 years through some difficult economic and political times to work with um, this, this board and its predecessors, with this administration and its predecessors, to get to work together in a respectful and um, meaningful way for the community, for our teachers, for our students, and we've, we've, we've done some good work take tremendous pride every day that I've been president of the Teachers Association to represent the finest professionals in this business. I thank you for your time. Thank you. Well, you don't get off that easy. I know. If I, if I I, I, uh, John, I would like to, I would like to recognize uh, uh, Dr. Katz's contribution in my experience as a member of this board uh, for the collaborative way the teachers union has, the teachers association has worked with uh, the board. Uh, and again, noting, you know, that uh, it's not always easy, but it's always professional and respectful. And I always appreciated that. He notes that he uh, took great pride in representing the finest teachers. And I just want to note that in my view, he did it in the finest way. Thank you. And uh, Dr. Katz, I, I believe your term doesn't end till the end of March, so you're welcome to come back to our next meeting. <laughs> the March meeting, I'll be in, in Washington, D.C. Oh. with the eighth graders. Oh. Yeah. We could dial you in if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> we could have a special public session. <laughs> yeah. You might like that break. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you very much for your, for your time and dedication. It certainly extends beyond the tenure of this board, so on behalf of previous boards, thank you. So. Anybody else from the public? Great. Motion to adjourn the meeting. Anybody? All moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Thanks. That's a record. There you go.